Hello everyone. So, welcome to the last lecture of this module and again in this lecture we are going to introduce another method that is the inverse power method and shifted inverse power method. Those are the variants of power method for finding the eigenvalues those are not dominant for a given matrix. In the last lecture we have talked about power method and we have seen that using the power method we can find only the dominant eigenvalue. However, we have seen in the previous lecture that if we use method of deflation with power method we can compute the other eigenvalues than dominant for a given matrix. However, in method of deflation together with power method what you have to do? First you find a dominant eigenvalue and eigenvector, then generate a new matrix and then for that matrix again apply power method which will give you the next dominant eigenvalue. Then make a new matrix, again apply the power method and so on. So, if I am having a 10 by 10 matrix and suppose I want to find out the fifth eigenvalue of this matrix which in order of decreasing order. So, what I have to do for doing this I need to apply 5 times power method to a 10 by 10 matrix and 4 times deflation transformation I need to use. So, hence it will be very expensive in terms of computational cost. So, inverse and shifted inverse power methods give us algorithms for computing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors those are not dominant directly in one it, uh, step by using the power method or process of power method just once. So, basically these methods are based on the two principle. The first principle is if lambda and v is an Eigen pair of a square matrix A of order n, then lambda inverse which will be basically 1 upon lambda and v be the Eigen pair of matrix A inverse. This is one of the rule and this can be shown very easily as it is the Eigen pair for A. So, I can write A v equals to lambda v if A is invertible then I can multiply both side by A inverse. So, A inverse into A into V will become A inverse into lambda V. What I can do? Lambda is a scalar I can take out. So, I can write and then I can divide the whole thing by 1 upon uh, by lambda both sides. So, 1 upon lambda V will become A inverse V. It means the eigenvalue of A inverse is 1 upon lambda and corresponding eigenvector is V. The other result we shift the eigenvalue that is it is saying if lambda V is an Eigen pair of a matrix A then lambda minus alpha together with Eigen vector V will be the Eigen pair of matrix A minus alpha I for the scalar alpha and here alpha not equals to lambda. So, this 
So, this again we can show we are having a new matrix B that is A minus alpha I. So, B V will become A minus alpha I into V and this will become a v minus alpha v and we know that lambda is an eigen value of a. So, it will be lambda v minus alpha v or I can write lambda minus alpha into v. So, it means the eigen value of b is lambda minus alpha and the eigen vector is v which is the same as of a and v is a minus alpha i. So, with these two results we will start our shifted inverse power method or inverse power method. So, suppose that a has distinct eigen values lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n. Consider the eigen value lambda j. Suppose I need to calculate or I need to compute this eigen value. So, then a constant alpha can be chosen so that mu 1 is 1 upon lambda j minus alpha is the dominant eigen value of a minus alpha i inverse. Furthermore, if we choose v 0 carefully then the sequence v k that is v 1 k v 2 k v n k having the components and c k given by y k equals to a minus alpha i inverse v k and v k plus 1 is 1 upon c k plus 1 y k this is the power method only power method for a minus alpha i inverse. And finally, we can calculate the j th eigen value that is lambda j h 1 upon mu 1 plus alpha from the mu. Now, what should be the choice of alpha? We cannot choose alpha just like equals to lambda j, but to be the mu 1 as the dominant eigen value so, it should be very large and for this alpha should be the uh, should be quite close to lambda j. So, for example, if I want to find out eigen value 4, alpha should be somewhere 4.2 or 3.8 or 4.3, 3.7 like that. So, proof of this result can be given very easily. Suppose the eigen value satisfy lambda 1 less than lambda 2 up to less than lambda n. Also let alpha be the number such that alpha not equals to lambda j, but very close to lambda j as compared to other eigen values. Then I can write that lambda j minus alpha less than lambda j i minus alpha for rest of the i from 1 to j minus 1 and then j plus 1 to n. Then using the result which I have drive on the board, I can say that 1 upon lambda j minus alpha will be the eigen value of a minus alpha i inverse and the corresponding eigen vector will remain v, which is the eigen vector of original a corresponding to the eigen value lambda j. So, Moreover, we can say that 1 upon lambda i minus alpha will be less than 1 upon lambda j minus alpha and hence lambda 1 upon lambda j minus alpha which is my mu 1 will be the dominant eigen value of the matrix A minus alpha i inverse. So, how it will work? Suppose I want to find out an eigen value of a given matrix, let us say some eigen value lambda j. So, I will choose 1 alpha close to this eigen value and which is not close to rest of the eigen values. Now, question arises without knowing about eigen values, how we will choose alpha? Because each and every time I am saying that alpha should be close to lambda j compared to any other lambda i. So, how to do it without looking? or without knowing about the eigen values. So, this will come from the Gersgorian disk. Just by looking on the given matrix, I can say about the 
रेंज ऑफ आइगन वैल्यू और इन विच डिस्क आइगन वैल्यू विल लाई एंड फ्रॉम देयर आई कैन गेट एन आइडिया सो द एलगर्थम शुड बी लाइक दिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू चूज एन इनिशियल वी नॉट विच शुड बी ए नॉन जीरो वेक्टर देन फोर के इक्वल्स टू जीरो वन टू यू विल फाइंड आउट वाई के एंड वाई के विल बी ए माइनस अल्फा इन वर्स वी के फ्रॉम हियर सी के वन प्लस वन विल बी द लार्जेस्ट कंपोनेंट ऑफ वेक्टर वाई के इन टर्म्स ऑफ एब्सल्यूट वैल्यू एंड देन यू कैन डिफाइन योर वी के प्लस वन एज वन अपॉन सी के प्लस वन इन टू वाई के सो द शिफ्टेड इनवर्स पावर मेथड विद दिस फिक्स शिफ्ट अल्फा इज नथिंग जस्ट पावर मेथड वेयर द मैट्रिक्स ए इज रिप्लेस्ड विद ए न्यू मैट्रिक्स ए माइनस अल्फा इनवर्स द कन्वर्जेंस ऑफ दिस एलगर्थ मीज गिवेन बाई दिस लेमडा वन माइनस अल्फा अपॉन लेमडा टू माइनस अल्फा वेयर लेमडा वन एंड लेमडा टू आर द क्लोजेस्ट एंड द सेकेंड क्लोजेस्ट आइगन वैल्यू टू अल्फा सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर चूजिंग ए मैट्रिक्स हैविंग आइगन वैल्यू फाइव एट एंड टेन एंड आई एम चूजिंग अल्फा इज फोर सो इट विल बी कन्वर्जेंस विल बी वन अपॉन दैट इज फाइव माइनस फोर अपॉन एट माइनस फोर सो वन अपॉन टू so it will be linear okay so it will be always linear it will be something like uh, always between 0 and 1 okay or up to 1 now we can use this shifted inverse power method with variable shift also variable shift means we can update our alpha also in the earlier algorithm we have a fixed alpha chosen it in the beginning and we are using that however here we can update our alpha also to improve the convergence of a given method so here the algorithm will be like that you take a non zero vector v not and a initial alpha that is let us say alpha not then compute y k y k will be a minus alpha k i inverse into v k and c k plus 1 will be the maximum component in terms of absolute value of y k like if you are for a 3 by 3 matrix y k is coming 1 minus 2 minus 4 so here c k will become minus 4 and then you set your v k plus 1 as 1 upon c k plus 1 into y k and here the same time you will update your alpha alpha will becomes alpha k plus 1 upon c k plus 1 and this method is locally quadratic convert having the quadratic or second order convergence locally we can apply the shifted inverse power method with real uh, quotient also and that is like choose an initial value v not that is not equals to 0 such a way that this is having the unit length then compute alpha not which will be the real quotient of this vector v not and that will be v not transpose a into v not now for k equals to 0 1 2 compute yk so yk will become a minus alpha k i inverse into vk set vk plus 1 as 1 upon yk to yk and then alpha k plus 1 can be updated as vk plus 1 transpose a into vk plus 1 so in each iteration again we are updating my v and here i am updating my alpha by the definition of real equation and this method is having cubic conver uh, this method is cubic convergent in case of symmetric matrices so let us take an example of shifted inverse power method for finding the eigen value one of the eigen value of a 3 by 3 matrix and here we will use the fixed alpha version of the inverse uh, shifted inverse power method means with fixed shift so the eigen value of this matrix is 4 to 1 the dominant eigen value is 4 so suppose i take alpha 4.2 so if i take alpha 4.2 
my shifted inverse power method will converge to eigen value 4 and corresponding eigen vector. So, for lambda 1 equals to 4, I can define my a minus alpha i will become a minus 4.2 i and then I will apply power method on this a minus 4.2 i with initial value 1 1 1. So, this I have taken in this way and then using this we continue in this way until the sequence CK and VK converges. So, Y0 is this value then C1 comes minus 23.181818 and then V1 is this particular vector. After 8 iterations we have mu1 equals to minus 5 which is the dominant eigen value of a minus 4.2 i inverse and then Vk converges to V1 that is 2 by 5, 3 by 5 and 1. So, hence the eigen value is given by 1 upon mu 1 plus alpha that is minus 1 upon 5 plus 4.2 that is 4, which verify our claim that for a given alpha it will converge to the closest eigen value. If I take alpha equals to 2.1 and I apply the same process, it converges to eigen value 2 with corresponding eigen vector 1 by 4, 1 by 2 and 1. So, so far we were talking about shifted inverse power method. Let us take a and in shifted inverse power method we need to calculate inverse and like that. Let us take a other variant of this shifted inverse power method just inverse power method and this we can use for finding the smallest eigen value of a given matrix and the corresponding eigen vector. And here we are using the result that if lambda and v be the eigen pair of a matrix A, then 1 upon lambda and v will be the eigen pair of A inverse. So, if lambda is an eigen value or lambda is the dominant eigen value of a given matrix A, then 1 upon lambda will be the dom, uh, dominant eigen value of uh, then lambda inverse will be the eigen value of A inverse and hence 1 upon lambda will be the smallest eigen value of the matrix A. So, if we apply the power method on A inverse what we can get? We can get the smallest eigen value of the matrix A. So, the inverse power method has advantage over power method that it can approximate any eigen value. Consider Y naught which is a non-zero eigen vector, uh, vector in Rn then y0 can be expressed as linear combination of eigen vectors of A and then applying power method on A inverse we can get Zk plus 1 equals to A inverse Yk and Yk plus 1 equals to Zk plus 1 upon Mk plus 1. So, in this way which gives the approximation to the dominant eigen value of A inverse in modulus that is the smallest eigen value of A in modulus. However, here we do not need to find A inverse to find a smallest eigen value of A because if you are having a 10 by 10 matrix. So, finding the inverse of a 10 by 10 matrix is computationally expensive and I will not prefer. Suppose I want to find out the smallest eigen value of a 10 by 10 matrix A. So, what is the inverse power method? I need to calculate A inverse and the dominant eigen value of A inverse will be the smallest eigen value of A. But we need to find out A inverse, here we do not require to find out A inverse at all. What we can? We are, what we are? We are starting with a V0 and what we are doing? We are finding V1 as A inverse into V0. So, what I will do? Here I will use multiply both side by A. So, my A V 1 will become V 0. So, instead of finding V 1 with this iterative process or uh, from this multiplication of a matrix with a column vector, I will be having a linear system of equation. 
and v 0 is known to you, a is known to you. So, you can find out v 1 directly from here without using a inverse. Then in the next iteration your v 2 will be a inverse into v 1. So, what you can say you can solve this system a v 2 equals to v 1 and from here you will find out the next iteration of the inverse power method that is your v 2 and so on. So, here no need to calculate a inverse at any stage. However, we need to solve a linear system of equation in each and every stage. So, let us take an example of this. We are taking this matrix. So, a is 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1. 0 minus 1 2. Here we are doing it by calculating a inverse, but we can do it without calculating a inverse also. So, if we are doing it with a inverse and starting with an initial solution 1 1 1, we are getting our first approximation as y 1 that is 1.5 1.5 and here if I divide it by 2, it is 1 upon 2 into 0.751 and 0.75 transpose. So, first approximation of the eigenvalue is coming 2 and eigenvector is this one. However, here we are doing it with a inverse, but if I do it without finding a inverse, then the system can be solved with less computational effort. For example, my original matrix is 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 and then we are having 0 minus 1 2. So, this is a v naught is 1 1 1 transpose and I am finding v 1 h a into v 0 which is coming minus 1.5 to minus 1.5 I think. So, which is coming 1.5 and 1.5. Now, here what I am doing? So, it is a inverse into v 0. So, doing this I need to calculate inverse of this matrix, but if I solve this system a into v 1 equals to v 0, then my augmented matrix becomes 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 minus 1 0 minus 1 2 and then 1 1 1. And after solving this, let us say solve it with Gauss elimination. So, 2 minus 1 0 and then R 2 will be replaced by R 2 plus 1 by 2 times R 1. So, this will be 0, 2 minus 1 by 2 will be 3 by 2 minus 1, 1, 1 plus 1 by 2 will be 3 by 2, then this is already 0 minus 1, 2, 1 and then this can be changed into just by R 3 replaced by R 3 plus 2 by 3 R 2 by using this row operation, elementary row operation, then I will get 2 minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 3 by 2 minus 1, 3 by 2 and then 0, 0, 2 minus 2 by 3, 4 by 3 and then this will become 1 plus 2 by 3. So, 1 plus 2 by 3 will be 5 by 3 and from here we will get this vector v 1. So, continuing this I will calculate y 2 
and then v 2 y 3 v 3 y 4 v 4 and after 4 iterations we observe that my system is converging to mu equals to 1.71 and lambda equals to 1 upon mu that is 0 0.5848. Since a minus 0.5848 i will be 0, so here lambda equals to 0 0.5848 will be the required eigenvalue that is the smallest eigenvalue and the corresponding eigenvector is 0 0.70731 and 0 0.7073. The smallest eigenvalue of a will be 2 minus root 2 that is 0 0.5858 that is again true which is as we have computed numerically. So, in this lecture we have learned the two variants of power method that is the shifted inverse power method and inverse power method for finding the eigenvalues other than dominant for a given matrix. This ends the module 3 of this course and in this module we have learned various methods for calculating power uh, calculating eigenvalues and eigenvectors like we started with Jacobi method then we have learned power method, power method with fixed shift, power inverse power method with variable shift, inverse power method with relay quotient and finally, the classical inverse power method for finding the smallest eigenvalue of a given matrix. In the next lecture, we will talk about interpolation till then. Bye. Thank you very much.